How's it going? Today we're going to solve question 1048, uh, longest string chain. Uh, what we're going to do is read this long, wordy, too long to read statement, translate it to something that we can understand, show a graphical representation of this problem, and then simplify and solve it, and at the end, code it. So stay tuned. I uh, hope you enjoy this video, and let's solve this question. All right, let's read the question. Given a list of words, each word consists of an English lowercase letter. This is important. Lowercase letter, why do they mention it? It's probably to make our life easier because if it has uppercase, then we have to think about other things. So we're giving a list of words that are lowercase. Great, what's the next thing? Let's say word number one, right? Um, is a predecessor of word number two. If and only if we can add exactly one letter, keyword, one letter anywhere in word number one, right? To make it equal to word number two. For example, ABC is a predecessor of ABAC, right? So effectively, in up to here, you're given an array of words, right? And within those array of words, there, you can think about a parent-child relationship, right? Can you construct a, uh, or can you come up with a parent um, and one child to formulate that one string from something that exists already in that array of strings, right? So what do I mean by this? We're gonna actually continue to read this first and then I'll go to a visual example to make it a little bit more clear. A word chain is a sequence of words, well, word one, word two, up to word k, with k equal or greater than one, where word one is a predecessor of word two, word two is a predecessor of word three, and so on. Okay, cool. This over here is confusing as hell. I know when I read it, it was like, uh, what, what the hell are they talking about? So what this is pretty much saying is like, all right, if my parent is say A, right? and my child, I notice something that's like a B as an example, then my third child will be like a B A and then like some other character, right? So it's like a whole chain. What is the longest chain um, I have within this particular array of strings, right? And our goal here is to return the longest possible length of the word chain with words chosen from a given list of words. All right. So let's look at a visual representation of this problem to better understand what we're talking about. Cool, so I have an example here uh, where I'm given an array of words, right? And our goal is to determine what is the longest chain of child and parent, right? So if we look at this array, you know, is there a parent that can form this particular child um, in this array? No, right? Because there's only one character. So, no. Uh, how about this one? No. Okay, well, when we look at this particular string, the parent can either be A or B, right? Because the whole concept is, I have to ensure that there is just one more unique character attached to the parent, right? So let's look at the next one. Okay, cool. And here, B, C, A. When we look at this, is there a string within here that contains BC as the parent? No. How about CA? No. How about BA? Well, yeah, there is one right here, BA. But remember, BA is also a child of one or A or B, right? So we have a relationship of saying, okay, this is going to be a one. This is a one. And this will be like, okay, this is a second generation. And we could confirm that because BA exists, this is the third generation. Right? And then look look at BDA. Does this exist anywhere here? Does is there BD? No. Is there BA? Yes. So this is also possible third generation. And then we look at the final one, which is uh well, is there a BDC? Mm, no. Is there a BDA? Well, yeah, so this can be a fourth generation, right? So you probably already know noticed as I explain the question, you probably start figuring out, oh wait there is a way of solving this problem relatively easily, right? Because our solution here would be four. So when we 
analyze this problem. Sometimes they use mathematical questions to, you know, complicate things, but it's always a very good idea to draw your examples and go through an actual case. It actually will help you um, come up with the proper algorithm, right? So when we look at this question, what can you think or how can you solve this problem, right? So what did we do when we were going through here and checking each value? We we're going and, you know, checking if something existed or not right when you're when you have this intuition of oh i need to check whether or not uh something existed but i don't want to iterate backwards what we could do intuitively is think of maybe i can create some sort of dynamic programming or some sort of cache to store something that i've seen in the past and then by doing that um maybe we can continue to solve it so we would let's just create a cache for now i'm going to call it like you know C as for cache, right? And we're gonna just create it as a uh, simple, simple, uh, simple object, right? We'll equal to like some object here, right? Where we iterate from A, right, as the key. And we'll just say this is the first generation, right? Now we look at this one right here, B. All right, well, I'm gonna check if this exists in C. No, all right, well, I'll put it in here, one. Now we look at B, A, right? Does this exist? Is there a parent that's B? Yes. Is there a parent that's A? Yes. However, um, all we really need to know, like, this is basically a, you know, a second generation, right? So we probably would want to book it that way. We could say like, okay, well, B, A will just basically be a ge next generation of either of these. And since either of these are one, then it's just intuitively, you add one to it right so let's look at the third one okay well does bc exist in this set here no right so maybe bc um bc doesn't exist so it's like okay well that's kind of trash uh well let's check if ba exists in this set does it exist um you you betcha right ba does exist um and exists over here so what we could do is check like okay well if that's the case then you know our b C A can potentially be this one plus one, which is three. Now, remember, we don't just finish off by B A. We have to check out if C A exists. C A does not exist in here, so we you don't care. We're all good. All right, let's move on here, which is going to go B D A, right? Does B D exist anywhere? No, but does B A exist? Yeah, it does right here, right? So we could go B D A will equal to BA plus one will be three, right? And then so on and so forth. You will find that this one will be B, D, C, A will equal to four and boom, right? All we need to do is as we iterate through this element, just keep track of which one is the biggest bad boy and then bam, return that. Return four as your solution and you should have the solution, all right? So let's put some code into this algorithm um, to see how to solve this. Um, but before we do that, like a lot of good ideas to analyze, okay, well, what is my time complexity of this problem, right? So the time complexity of this problem before we code is, well, we're gonna have to go, you know, through this n times, right? So let's put, mark that down. It's gonna be like n, right? But then we have to also check, you know, all the possible combinations of each of these words. I'm gonna call this length over here, W, right? Of W, oh my God, my writing's horrible. Um, so it's N of W uh, for whatever contact it is for um, time complexity wise, O of N, N W, time. And for space, this can, if the worst case scenario, can go all the way to n, right? So O of n space, right? Cool. That's only for this particular algorithm when we look at it, right? However, there was one little trick in here, right? Nowhere in the statement did it say that the, uh, the, actual, um, the actual array of string is sorted, right? Have you noticed that by into they try to trick us here by giving us a sorted by length array, right? So what happens if, for example, uh, BDA was the first character? 
right? If BDA was the first character, then you would probably, it would probably mess things up and this whole math would not work, right? So there's actually one hidden thing that we need to do before we set things up, and that is a n log n sort of this particular element by the length, by the length, right? So overall, it's not gonna be O of n because your bottleneck is sorting this bad boy. O of n log n. All right, cool. So that will probably be your bottleneck in this equation. So let's put some code into this equation and see how we can solve this problem. All right, so we're back with the code. Let's try to solve it now. One of the first things I was mentioning, we need to create some sort of cache, right? So let cache equal to an empty object. We need to sort the words, right? Words dot sort a, b, like that. Um, and if you, here's another tip, pro tip. If you include these like magical brackets, you have to make sure you have the return statement, right? If you don't include it, it it's inferred. Right, so in this case, just to save space, I'm just going to go a at uh, a dot length minus b dot length. So this is indirectly returning already. Cool. And then we also have to create let a max uh, max length. I'm just going to store it as zero, and I am going to also track the um, longest to equal to zero. What this longest is mean is like as we check each word, right? We want to see if that which one is the longest parent, right? And we have to track that. So what do we do now? All right. So we have to iterate for every word. So let the word of words, right? We're going through every single word, and then for every single word, we actually want to. Uh, yeah, actually, we need to put this in this scope in here, not outside here. Okay, we have to move it back into this scope so it gets reset for every word, right? Um, and then we have to go and iterate through every character, right? So let's write a simple for root. Let i index equal to zero, right? And i is gonna be less than, oops, less than, less than words, word.length, and i is plus plus, great. All right, so what do we do here now? All right, one of the first things that we need to do is to check whether or not, um, or create that subword, right? So the subword will be, let subword equal to, um, now there's various ways of doing this. You could do it um, through, you know, you could do it through either, um, splicing it or you can do it by substring but for our case i'm going to use uh substring or slice to solve this which is basically going to be word word dot slice from index zero to i plus uh word dot slice from i plus one right all this really does is basically eliminate one of those characters and keep the rest there intact to check if whether or not um is this your child or which one is that child along the way, right? Um, and then afterwards, we need to track what is the longest, um, basically cached uh, child-parent relationship, right? So I'm gonna go longest equals math.max of, well, is it longer than what is existing right now? Or can I check whether or not if it's cached, cache to uh, sub word, right? Or if that subword doesn't exist, then we're gonna, by default, make it a zero, right? Because it can happen, right? There can be a case that the subword does not exist. Um, instead of storing a memory, I'm just gonna make it into a uh, default zero because we don't care about it anymore. And of course, we plus one to this element, right? Um, to determine the longest thing. Cool. Now that we have this, now what do we have to do here? So once we know um, our longest child-parent relationship, we need to update that word, right? So our cache, cache at the word should be equal to the longest. Longest, great. And we have to find the maximum. Now, the max is essentially 
equal to math.max at the current maximum or the longest one we found so far. And finally, we turn, return the maximum. And this should solve the problem. Let's try it out. Bam, we solved the problem. Hope this helps you. Um, hope this helps you when solving this problem. It breaks down the question into individual elements. I find one of the helpful tools to solve these problems is always go through an example, write it down, talk it out, um, and then from talking it out, you can see that well, by talking it out, we actually came up with the algorithm, right, to solve a problem. So hope this helped. If you like it, please hit the subscribe and sub. If you want to get notified by the most updated problems, hit that bell. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you guys.